morning. Um, as head of research at uh, Sciences Po Grenoble, it's a pleasure for me to introduce the first uh, webinar of our institute. Um, our webinar cycle will uh, take place uh, regularly through the year. The next one will take place in uh, next November and uh, we'll uh, welcome researchers from different fields, including uh, political science, um, law, economics, sociology, history, and management sciences. Um, I would like uh, to thank uh, IT and communication services for their support. And uh, now it's time to, uh, to go to the first uh, webinar presentation by uh, professors uh, Jean Marcoux and Daniel uh, Meyer from the chair in uh, Mediterranean and Middle Eastern Studies uh, and from uh, SADAP 2 and the PACT uh, Research uh, Centers. So I wish you a very great first uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I am happy to open this first webinar uh, with my friend uh, Daniel Meyer, uh, who is like me teaching um, in the Master of Middle Eastern Studies at the same time member of uh, the Mediterranean Middle Eastern uh, Studies uh, Chair. Uh, but first, I want to thank the, the staff of our uh, communication and IT departments, um, which allow us to be, to be with you uh, today. Uh, I would like to thank to uh, the Diplomacy Journal, uh, which has just uh, published uh, our file on the Eastern um, uh, Mediterranean conflict in its last issue. I recommend you this uh, uh, review with article of uh, Daniel and me and other professors of uh, Sciences Po Grenoble. Uh, and I especially thank the journal for allowing us to use the maps and drag, drag, diagram you will see um, during the, the conference. And of course, uh, I thank the organizers uh, of this very relevant webinar program, Professor Marie-Estelle Binet and uh, Professor uh, Frédéric Gontier. Uh, thanks uh, you for, uh, thank you all for giving us the floor today. Well, I have been asked to, to, to speak for half an hour uh, after which I will give the floor to my dear friend, uh, Daniel, uh, who will launch the debate after a comment of 15 minutes, uh, dedicate to strategic issue of the East Med uh, game. Uh, as an introduction to this webinar, I would like to confess why we carried out the file uh, in the Diplomacy Journal. Mainly uh, because we were uh, surprised, we were surprised to see uh, the tension rising in uh, uh, the Mediterranean, Eastern Mediterranean, for gas reason this summer, just when the corona virus, the corona crisis was causing an unprecedented drop in oil and gas price, making, of course, uh, the cost of offshore uh, operation exorbitant. Uh, we therefore uh, thought that more than ever, gas was not uh, the only issue in these tensions, uh, but was the most visible aspect of a broader strategic restructuring. I will focus in my presentation on three points. I will try to illustrate them with maps uh, to permit you to understand better this uh, complex uh, issue. My first point, well, the gas uh, from the Eastern Mediterranean has revived the Greco-Turkish antagonism. Uh, but I will first come back uh, 
uh, to the contemporary aspect, uh, contemporary origin uh, of this dispute. This will be my first point. The second one, um, I will show uh, that there are other important players around the gas field of the Eastern Mediterranean. And finally, I will open on the ensuing strategic issues by addressing uh, of course, the reaction of uh, Turkey, uh, the EU, NATO, and this to permit my dear Daniel to continue uh, and to uh, launch uh, the debate. My first point, uh, the origin of the Greek-Turkish uh, antagonism, uh, beware, I am trying to launch uh, the PowerPoint and the uh, PowerPoint to share uh, the screen. Do you see at the moment the screen? Great, it's working. Is it working? Daniel is okay, okay, Daniel. So um, you see there what I was saying in the introduction. Huh? that the Mediterranean in the gas uh, deposit, the word gas deposit is only 1.3% uh, uh, of the word ga gas deposit in the world. Uh, this is my three point uh, to confirm my three point. And then, well, this is the first map. Uh, this is the first map and the map illustrate this antagonism in the agency, uh, on both parts of the agency. Uh, in the interwar, after the Lausanne Treaty of 1923, uh, Greek and Turkey entered in a successful uh, reconciliation. And in many ways, in fact, their relation uh, were better than the in the recent month. Um, sorry, better in, in the recent month. Uh, yet the first war and the Greek-Turkish war that follows uh, left a complex situation for the future because the Greeks were expelled from Anatolia, but they kept uh, all the islands of the Aegean Sea. You see in, on the map, uh, the island of the Aegean Sea, uh, uh, they are uh, all quite all uh, Greek island. And after the Second World War, the conflict, the conflict arose for three reasons. Uh, uh, first reason, uh, Greece, very involved in the conflict in the Second World War, obtained from defeat Italy, the Dodecanese Island. You see the Dodecanese Island on the uh, southeastern part uh, of the Aegean Sea. Uh, uh, the Dodecanese Island and uh, this deal after the Second uh, World War this deal was never accepted by Turkey, and Turkey was not really involved uh, in the Second World War. And Turkey has never admitted this first uh, this uh, this deal. The second point, the second point is the decolonization of Cyprus, and this decolonization of Cyprus was marked by serious intercommunity incidents. And uh, the fragile uh, balance uh, established after independence collapsed in 1974. After the overthrow of the regime of Bishop Makarios and by the Greek junta at that time uh, and the Turkish intervention in 1974 that divide uh, the island in two parts and inaugurate a conflict between uh, Greek Cypriots and uh, Turkish Cypriot that never uh, has never been solved until today. Uh, 
despite uh, the Cyprus accession uh, to the EU. This is the second point. Uh, and the third point is the, uh, at the end of the 50s, uh, the development uh, of the international law of the sea fuel another uh, conflict between Greece and Turkey with Turkey refusing to subscribe uh, to the main conventions because it believed that it would give Greece almost complete sovereignty over the agency. All this conflict has been fossilized uh, for years and years. And what could think that the existence of gas resource uh, would make possible to diffuse these tensions uh, to diffuse this tension definitively, uh, but the opposite scenario, unfortunately, as you may know, has occurred. And I come to my second point, uh, and my second point will be illustrated by another map, another map. Why? Because there are, in fact, as I told you, other important players around the gas fields of Eastern Mediterranean. Turkey, Greece, and Cyprus are not the only protagonists in the game. In fact, the first beneficiary of gas from Eastern Mediterranean uh, was Israel with the discovery in uh, uh, 2010 of the Tamar II and the Leviathan uh, gas fields, uh, which have uh, made Israel uh, an exporting country suddenly, uh, exporting country able to supply its former Egyptian supplier. This is a paradox. But after the discovery of the Aphrodite gas uh, field, the Cyprus Aphrodite gas field uh, in 2011, Egypt has benefited from the most important discovery with the location of the Zor deposit. You see the Zor deposit uh, in front of the Egyptian coast. Uh, in 2013. We can say, we have to mention too, that the Palestinian territories, and especially the Gaza Strip, uh, have resource too, uh, resource that they cannot uh, exploit at the, at the moment. Uh, uh, this may be uh, also the case with Lebanon, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, Daniel will elaborate on the point. Uh, Lebanon is in conflict with Israel, and this may be the case also uh, uh, with Syria. Uh, and Syria at the moment, we have information about that, is considering prospecting to uh, in the zone. Um, it is important to observe too uh, that and this discovery of gas has also led to a phenomenon of appropriation of the maritime areas in the Eastern Mediterranean with the multiplication of declarations of economy, exclusive economic zone uh, by uh, the producer states. Look at this map, uh, look at this map. Uh, uh, you have uh, this EEC uh, in Eastern Mediterranean. We are speaking uh, of a Greek game. In fact, there are uh, several games uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean. What sort of games? Well, after uh, signing the EastMed, uh, gas pipeline project, you see here, uh, uh, the EastMed gas pipeline project in January 2020, uh, Greece and Cyprus uh, uh, 
uh, two members of the EU, uh, two member states of the EU, uh, believe that they can help uh, reduce uh, Europe's dependence on the Russian gas by allowing new supplies from Israel and Cyprus. So Greece and uh, Cyprus consider they have a new role to play in Eastern Mediterranean, a new important role to play uh, in Eastern Mediterranean uh, to uh, supply, of course, uh, uh, Europe. Uh, secondly, Egypt has also ambitions in this area. Uh, Egypt is liquefying uh, its own gas and the gas of Israel, of its literally neighbors, and that for export purpose toward Europe. Egypt is becoming an unavoidable energy hub. Uh, and this unavoidable energy hub is, of course, rival uh, to Turkey and could be also rival uh, to the East Med uh, pipeline. Um, anyway, uh, I should say that this game uh, led to new islands, new cooperation, new con convergences, uh, and in addition, uh, to the multiple tripartite submit uh, it has regularly organized in, in, with Greece and Cyprus since uh, 2013, Egypt succeed in setting up a gas forum in 2019, which brought together Greece, Cyprus, Israel, the Palestinian authorities, uh, and Italy and France at the moment apply uh, to be a, a member of this gas forum, but uh, Turkey and Lebanon and of course Syria uh, are not part uh, of this gas forum. But we have we just mentioned Turkey, and let's speak now uh, in a third point about Turkey's reaction and the implication of the EU and NATO. Considering that um, the rights uh, of access to gas and uh, of the Turkish Cypriot uh, has been violated and that this uh, maritime expropriation, appropriation by a neighboring country, uh, you remember the, the third map, uh, where uh, drawn on its continental shelf, uh, Turkey launched its own prospection and has inaugurated since the last months a sort of gunboat policy in this dispute, uh, maritime areas. But it is necessary to observe that uh, the Eastern Mediterranean gas politics is in direct competition with Turkey efforts uh, to uh, become uh, the key links in uh, Europe's southern gas supply corridor. Uh, especially because you see that Turkey is involved in the TANAP uh, pipeline, Transanatolian pipeline, uh, since uh, 20, uh, this pipeline is working since 2018. And is, uh, Turkey it's all, is also uh, in, uh, involved in the Turkish stream, uh, Turkish stream uh, pipeline. And this Turkish stream uh, pipeline is working since the beginning of this year. Uh, in fact, it is uh, funny to observe that the Turkish uh, stream pipeline or the Turk stream pipeline is, was open uh, some days after the conclusion of the agreement for the Ismed uh, pipeline between Israel, Cyprus, and, and, and Greece. Um, Wow, and this is an interesting aspect, this conflict of hubs, uh, the Turkish one, uh, 
mainly uh, supplying uh, Caucasian gas uh, and Russian gas respectively, and Egyptian uh, hub, uh, mainly supplying uh, the East Med gas um, with the ambition we mentioned previously. In fact, uh, Turkey fears at the moment that it will be confined to its coast and that uh, a scenario already experienced in the uh, Aegean Sea will be reproduced in the Eastern Mediterranean. This claim is now frequently expressed by a reference to the existence of a blue homeland in Turkey, Mavi Vatan. Uh, this com com concept of uh, blue homeland, Mavi Vatan, was invented in uh, 2006 by Rear Admiral Jem Gurdenis to justify the development of the Turkish uh, naval uh, forces. But this concept is uh, now used by uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan and the uh, uh, Turkish president to refer, in fact, to the maritime areas from which Turkey is said uh, to have been uh, injustifically uh, deprived in, the, in its near abroad. Uh, the Blue Homeland uh, was also the part of the doctrine uh, behind Turkish intervention in Libya at the end of last year, uh, at the beginning of this year. Uh, and I remind you that uh, this uh, Turkish uh, intervention result uh, in November uh, uh, 20, at the end of the month of November 2019, uh, in the signing of a treaty to um, draft uh, the exclusive economic zone of both countries, uh, and especially a uh, an agreement with the Libyan government of Tripoli. Uh. And then in 2020, uh, uh, this uh, Turkish intervention uh, result in a military uh, operation, which helped uh, to uh, correct uh, the compromise situation of the government of Tripoli uh, facing the force of uh, General Haftar supported by Sunni Arab countries, uh, especially Saudi Arabia, Egypt, the Emirates, Russia, and Russia, of course, and even uh, France by some aspects. So, um, well, in the current situation, uh, you see that the involvement of Turkey, Turkey is not a gas producer at the moment, but uh, the strategic uh, claim of Turkey, the strategic um, uh, dimension addressed by Turkey, in fact, gave a broader uh, dimension uh, uh, to this conflict. Uh, and at the moment, we see that other important countries are involved in, the, in this conflict of the Eastern Mediterranean. I mean, of course, and I just mentioned Russia, I, we have to think to the position of the United States. Uh, and of course, uh, we have to think to uh, NATO, the reaction of, uh, and of NATO and, of course, of the European Union. And at the moment, while Turkey is calling for NATO arbitration, uh, that because uh, this uh, call sidelines uh, Cyprus, which is not a member of the alliance, uh, Greece is counting mainly on the European Union to contain uh, uh, the U Turkish ambition. Uh, but as uh, you may observe, uh, the EU countries uh, do not always agree with each other. Uh, and um, 
you remember perhaps that the uh, European summit, uh, European Council took place at the beginning of the of the months of October, and finally it didn't decide the properly sanction against uh, Turkey. It support the Greek and Cyprus position, but avoid uh, until now uh, to decide on uh, sanction uh, against uh, Ankara. Uh, other power, uh, of course, the United States, Russia, are not indifferent uh, to what is at stake uh, in East Med. And um, I think that um, my dear Daniel now have some uh, ideas and will launch the debates by some comment and broader comment uh, regarding this issue uh, of the Greek game uh, in the uh, East Med. So, Daniel, you have the floor now, and uh, I hope to have some uh, a debate with uh, our attendants. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, um, Jean, uh, for bringing uh, our attention to uh, all these uh, dimensions. And I think, I mean, this map that we uh, can see now is extremely revealing of uh, what is at stake in terms of uh, rivalries. And so we have seen that uh, a full great game is now unfolding in the Mediterranean region. Uh, this game works with several alliances and divisions among state actors at play, and there are many, and tend to drag additional actors to uh, more time pass and the worst the situation turn, including in peripheral regions like today's Nagorno-Karabakh. While it seems clear that Turkey and Greece are at odds, uh, it might be also clear that East Med pipeline project works more and more as an alliance between some states of the region. Uh, Greece and Cyprus get the alliance of Israel, Egypt, and Italy. Isolated Turkey started to build a strategy of tension, as we've seen, in line with its previous strategy in Syria, following its own national interests. In this perspective, Ankara shaped an agreement with the head of the national government in, in Tripoli, Prime Minister Al-Saraj, uh, to support him militarily uh, with surrogate troops of Syrian combatants taken from the Syrian uh, Liberation Army militia uh, that Turkey is controlling uh, in the occupied uh, north of Syria. This helps Erdogan to bring the maritime issues in the Mediterranean Sea at the forefront of the agenda by claiming, as we've seen, a common maritime boundary with Libya. While doing this maneuver, Turkey knew it cut off and jeopardized the East Med pipeline that we can see on this map uh, 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 this pipeline route from the east to the west of the Mediterranean. This rather provocative strategy was then doubled by the maritime exploration last summer uh, with the boat Oruç Reis uh, that fostered the furious declaration uh, of Greece and the French military demonstration and the recent threats of EU sanctions. Moreover, the Libyan adventure put the relationship with Moscow at odds. Putin usually supporting al Saraj rival, Marshal Haftar. Turkey's move to mediate between the two Palestinian factions in late September is by no means a way to come closer to another axis of actors, namely Syria, Lebanon, a two other marginalized actor by the East West project with oil and gas potential resources. But of course, a larger geopolitical picture brings to light two global actors in the game, the EU and Russia, two global actors respectively needed by Lebanon and Syria. Currently, two extensions of this tension can be seen. One is linked to the recent peace agreement between United Arab Emirates and Israel, thus linking the Gulf monarchies with the Mediterranean area through Egypt and Israel, but in the meantime, pushing for stronger bounds between Turkey and Qatar, 
uh, both regimes promoting a transnational solidarity of the Muslim Brotherhood alongside the Palestinian Hamas. The second extension, uh, the war between Armenia and Azerbaijan on the Armenian enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh contributed to complicate it, uh, the Eastern Mediterranean maritime issue somehow. Turkey's military support of Azerbaijan with surrogate Syrian troops, again, stemming from uh, former Islamist movements in Syria, tend to deepen the rift with Russia that is fearing a new upsurge of Islamist movement in the Caucasus. While this adventurous path may trigger a larger military response from Armenia and the heavily bombed Nagorno-Karabakh enclave, it is also raising concern in Lebanon that has host that is hosting a significant Armenian community and raise a formal protest. Lastly, Erdogan meddled in Northern Cyprus with the unilateral move to reopen Varosha suburb of Famagusta a few days ago. Uh, and this Varosha is a former Greek neighborhood abandoned in 1974 when facing the Turkish military invasion. This move intends to influence the local presidential polls in uh, uh, North Cyprus and alter, therefore, settlement parameters in the peace negotiation with the Greek part of the island. Uh, Turkey's multiplication of uh, a foothold uh, in a larger region spanning from the Maghreb to the Caucasus uh, and north of Iraq creates an extended game that converge in the Mediterranean area, where a single scratch can inflame several fronts. On the other hand, Turkey's strategy opposing Russia and the EU appears extremely risky uh, due to its weak economy and shrinking internal legitimacy. Russia's and AU's forthcoming move will be probably key elements in the political strategy in the region, as we already seen the effect of EU's threats when Turkish boats recently back off and negotiation with Greece resumed. Russia's geopolitical interests are spanning on a larger front and may impose its agenda on some actors in the Mediterranean game like Syria or Libya through peace negotiation ongoing. While the current order in the Mediterranean appears to be deeply linked to EU's migration and security policy way beyond the simple gas and oil issue. Thank you very much. So these are mainly my remarks and uh, uh, comments uh, to enlarge also the picture. And uh, so I think, uh, Jean, if you agree, we can now open the floor for a, a larger discussion and questions. Of course, thank you, Daniel. So the floor is yours and do not hesitate to raise questions because I think we have plenty of time to have a, an interesting uh, discussion over these um, different uh, aspects of the conflict and its consequences. I will be, I will hand with the presentation, with the map, uh, in order to see uh, the question, better to see the question. If necessary, we can come back to the, to the maps. So, no questions. Oh, feel free to open the microphone and uh, raise issues and questions. Um, ah, I think there is one. Yes. Maybe I'm going to read the, the question. Yes. Uh, so, 
Uh, the question is in French. Bonjour. Qu'en est-il de l'opinion publique turque vis-à-vis -vis de tous ces développements et interventions aux frontières du pays, donc de la Turquie? Maybe, Jean, it's a question for you. Thank you. Uh, yes. Well, we can bet that um, domestic issues are important also to understand what is happening in uh, the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, of course, this uh, tension, uh, I mentioned the, the rising tensions since spring and especially during the summer, cross important event, uh, domestic events, and uh, especially uh, this um, uh, transformation of uh, Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. Hagia Sophia was, um, has been. Um, a museum was transformed uh, in a museum by Atatürk in the 30s, in uh, 1934. Uh, and uh, since uh, last July, Hagia Sophia was, was uh, uh, again transformed into a mosque, huh? uh, returned to his uh, mosque statue. And uh, the event was uh, celebrated, heavily celebrated by uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan in a speech, uh, I, I should say that the, the speech uh, has a huge strategic dimension because uh, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan uh, said, uh, especially uh, um, respond to the protest of uh, several countries uh, by um, saying that these countries have nothing to say because they permit uh, attacks against uh, Jerusalem and especially the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. So by this kind of remark of Erdogan, we saw that, um, well, domestic issues were mixed with uh, international and strategic issues. Of course, uh, I think that um, when looking at this situation in Eastern Mediterranean, we have to keep in mind that, uh, as Daniel uh, said, uh, the situation in, uh, in Turkey is economically is difficult, and especially also with the epidemic and the, the, the virus. Uh, uh, but politically, the situation is difficult to, uh, to be re-elected, uh, especially uh, to win the referendum that uh, led to an authoritarian presidential regime in Turkey in 2017. Uh, the, the ruling party, uh, AKP, has to uh, conclude an agreement with the extreme right party and the uh, MHP, uh, uh, and then to win uh, the election, presidential and uh, parliamentary election in 2018, uh, that permit the implementation of the new uh, constitutional amendment and to transform uh, Turkey in a presidential regime. Uh, Turkey to, uh, sorry, the, the, the AKP, the ruling party, need uh, the support of the, of the, of this extreme right party. And, uh, well, of course, uh, very uh, nationalist and offensive uh, move, this nationalist and offensive move uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean, but also uh, Daniel mentioned this very interesting and important conflict in the Caucasus uh, between Azerbaijan and, uh, and, and uh, Armenia. Of course, this kind of offensive uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean, in Libya, and in, um, in, uh, in the Caucasus, uh, well, are supported, strongly supported by uh, uh, 
the, the nationalist party, the Mehepe. Um, they are very happy with uh, this, uh, this situation. Well, the other point is to, um, is to see if, uh, what, is the, what is the position, what is the feeling of the rest of the Turkish people. And at the moment, uh, you have a strong polarization between pro and anti Erdogan. Huh? Uh, don't forget that uh, during the last year uh, local election, uh, municipal election in Istanbul, uh, the ruling party of Erdogan uh, uh, lost uh, the election and it was really a sort of uh, humiliation for Erdogan because the first step in politics for Erdogan uh, was in Istanbul in uh, 1994. Uh, so I think that an important part of the Turkish people are worried uh, with this um, foreign policy. Uh, when you look at the, the situation also with the, the Syrian conflict, the Syrian conflict has huge affect a lot the, the Turkish society uh, with a lot of migrants in, in Turkey. And sometimes, as Daniel said, uh, of course, well, Turkey is not guilty for the war uh, that are taking place uh, uh, in the neighbor, its neighboring, neighboring countries, but uh, the position sometimes of uh, Erdogan regarding this conflict were quite risky. Uh, and when we look at the history of the Republic and the uh, former, uh, former uh, foreign policy of Turkey, inspired especially by the Kemalist um, period, it was a very uh, careful uh, policy. Turkey avoid uh, at that time uh, to uh, uh, participate to the conflict, uh, Turkey during the Cold War, and especially as a privileged relationship with uh, uh, the, its Western allies. And Turkey at that time turned its back uh, to the neighboring countries. So to um, involve in this many conflict of the region, uh, of course, worry a large part of the of the Turkish people, and it's not sure that uh, everybody is going to in Turkey is going to support uh, this uh, sometimes very nationalist uh, politics. Thank you very much, uh, Jean. Um, uh, I think we received several questions, and okay. so. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, uh, to the next question we have in line um, is um, this one, I'm reading this. To what extent is the partnership with Libya a way for Turkey to increase its leverage power on migration issues? Uh, maybe I can provide a few uh, elements uh, if you agree or, or you can add also things, uh, Jean, but I think this... Uh, 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 this is a very interesting question in the um, uh, in the framework of this uh, current uh, 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 resignation of um, uh, uh, Prime Minister Saraj and uh, and the ongoing process of uh, um, let's say uh, 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 takeover uh, in uh, uh, ruling in uh, uh, in Tripoli. Uh, so there is a question mark here. Um, uh, but for sure, uh, uh, at some point, uh, uh, the, the Libya's uh, uh, card might be um, a, a form of leverage, at my view, uh, on the topic of migration, uh, uh, why not, uh, as well as on other topics, but probably it was not uh, 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 considered as uh, 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 as, as, a, as an element, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a key element of the Turkish strategy in the moment uh, uh, Ankara uh, did the, the move 
uh, and the alliance with Libya, but it is a possibility, at my view, it's a totally a possibility, uh, and it depends also on uh, uh, who is going to uh, 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 succeed uh, to, uh, to take over in, in Tripoli. Maybe Jean. Uh... Okay. I, I think we can. Uh, we. Uh, I think your your response was uh, interesting, and uh, I think we can move to other okay. questions in order to permit everybody to have uh, yeah. a so, response and to change the the different uh, topics. Uh, yes. And so we have another question uh, from uh, Yves Chemail. Uh, does Erdogan want to renegotiate post-war treaties? And if yes, where and when? So to renegotiate re which treaty? Post-war treaties. Post-war treaties. Well, you mean uh, especially the, the NATO uh, agreement and uh, well, the, this, uh, I think that, of course, uh, during the last uh, years, um, sometime we have seen uh, Turkey far from the NATO spirit uh, and the NATO agreement, especially when, uh, when Turkey uh, acquired uh, this uh, S-400 uh, defense missile system, uh, defense missile system uh, uh, two years ago, uh, especially uh, on some conflict. Uh, well, we saw Turkey searching for, for a room of maneuver. Um, but it's interesting also to uh, observe that uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean conflict, as I told you, uh, Turkey asked for a mediation of NATO and Turkey archly uh, respond to France regarding NATO. And you, you remember that uh, uh, Emmanuel Macron, uh, French president, has arch words uh, against uh, NATO. Um, and uh, well, on the contrary, uh, Turkey at this moment support NATO and uh, support um, uh, try to boost its relation with uh, with the United States. I think it's because well, uh, Daniel was speaking of this involvement uh, of Turkey in different fronts, and especially the relation between uh, Russia and Turkey. Of course, uh, when we are observing this uh, rapprochement uh, between uh, Turkey and Russia, we can worry for the future of uh, Turkey in NATO. But at the same time, uh, don't forget that for Russia, Turkey uh, is interesting as long as Turkey is still a member of NATO. Uh, I remember this very interesting article of a Russian observer uh, in, uh, in Moscow, and uh, he was speaking of Turkey as our friend in NATO. Uh, so uh, I think uh, to, to be part of NATO is... Uh, very is still important for Turkey. And if Turkey is um, uh, canceling uh, totally his agreement with NATO, because Turkey tried to, to uh, be involved in the Russian organization, such as the uh, being group or uh, this kind of Euro-Asian organization and it's interesting to observe that Turkey was not admitted as a full member in this organization. Why? Because Turkey is perceived by uh, Russia in this case, Turkey is perceived by China in this case, Turkey even is perceived by uh, the Central Asia's uh, former uh, Soviet Republic 
as a member of the Western Bloc, as a potential ally of the, the Western Bloc. That's why finally, I think that um, at the moment, Turkey tried to manage a sort of grand écart uh, between uh, uh, well, its traditional uh, Western alliance and which is still a military alliance. Uh, and, uh, and these new uh, friends, new friends like Russia, uh, Iran, new friends which are not really allies. Uh, we can speak also of what happened in Syria with the process of Astana. I hope I answer the question of uh, Eve, my friend Eve, and who, you are welcome in this uh, first uh, webinar of Sciences Po Grenoble. Thank you, uh, Jean. Uh, we also received a few other questions. So I'm taking the two next question from one person, Ali. Uh, so uh, questions in, uh, uh, part of the question is in French. Uh, President Erdogan vient d'annoncer ce matin de, no uh, de nouvelles ressources de, en gaz trouvées dans la mer Noire. Pensez-vous que ces réserves de la mer Noire vont affecter la stratégie de la Turquie dans la région de donc est méditerranéenne? And the question also follows uh, 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 on the same path. Can you please give us opinion about effects of U.S. presidency election for Turkish policy in this region? For example, if uh, Joe Biden is uh, becoming the president. Okay, so um, first we can answer the question of. Uh the gas dis discovery in Black Sea. I, I don't know if you want to, uh, to, to, to give us your opinion uh, or... Please. Yes, um, well, this is a new discovery. Uh, I haven't seen the, the, the last uh, statement of uh, Erdogan this morning. I was uh, with my international students in, to speak of uh, French, French issues <laughs> this morning, but uh, I will do it as, as soon as possible. Uh, but I know uh, that uh, Turkey already uh, discovered last month's uh, uh, reserve in uh, in um, in Black Sea in the Black Sea, and it was celebrated by the government as a great uh, victory. Of course. Uh, as I try to uh, uh, tell you, uh, there is a great uh, frustration for Turkey to see this uh, uh, discovery of gas um, uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean with, uh, and, and Turkey out of the game. And with this, uh, because Turkey launched this seismic boat and this uh, prospective boat uh, in um, in the Eastern Mediterranean, but at the same time, in the in the in the Black Sea, um, and it's important because uh, the idea I mentioned this idea of the blue homeland. The blue homeland is not only the Aegean Sea and the Eastern Mediterranean. The blue homeland is also uh, the the Black Sea, and this is very important in the memory of Turkey because the. Uh, the sultans uh, during the Ottoman Empire were the the sultan of the of the two seas, uh, the 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 White Sea, uh, Agdeniz in in Turkish, and the Black Sea, uh, uh, Karadeniz uh, in, uh, in in Turkey. And uh, recently, you have uh, um, drills. First time the. The British, the, the Turkish Navy um, carried out uh, uh, drills at the same time in the Aegean Sea, in the Mediterranean, and in the Black Sea in February uh, 2019. And the, 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 the drills were called the, the Blue Homeland Drills. And so uh, this discovery of gas in, uh, in um, in um, uh, in the Black Sea for Turkey was very emotional uh, and celebrated, but it could have 
a concrete result because one of the problem of uh, Turkey at the moment is also to uh, uh, get energy, to access energy and uh, energy on, at the one when, when we're speaking of uh, energy and, and Turkey, uh, it has to be mentioned that Turkey depend a lot of Russia, of course, of Azerbaijan, of uh, Iran, and uh, uh, Turkey has no resource. Uh, the, 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 the main resource of uh, Turkey regarding energy is cool, a bit cool. Um, and uh, Turkey is developing at the moment the first nuclear plant with uh, 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 Russia. And of course, for Turkey, having energy is, uh, is a very important uh, uh, issue. So I think this discovery uh, are important in the Black Sea are important. Uh, perhaps in the first statement of the Turkish government, we have to assess, uh, to assess in fact, the, the real discovery. Uh, this uh, discovery is, is a bit, uh, uh, overestimated uh, by the, the Turkish government. But at the same time, Turkey is launching ship in the Eastern Mediterranean, but also in the, in the, in the, in the Black Sea. And of course, it's important. Okay, well, um, thank you, Jean. Uh, maybe uh, also something on, uh, on the, the impact of uh, the election of uh, Joe Biden uh, or, or versus Donald Trump in the next uh, uh, a U.S. presidency election. Uh, um, uh, I don't know if you if you want to add some. Uh, some yes, uh, I think it's very important because um, well, the relation uh, with the United States deteriorate, uh, and especially they were awful during at the end of the Obama terms, the second term of uh, Barack Obama. Uh, they, despite some uh, clashes. Uh, important clashes, they improve uh, with uh, Donald Trump. And uh, we can say at the moment, there is two kinds of relation between Turkey and the US. Uh, the relation with the diplomatic and defense establishment, the, the, the American the diplomatic and defense uh, establishment and the personal relation uh, between uh, Erdogan and uh, Donald Trump. And sometime, uh, well, uh, the, this personal relation uh, permit to save uh, the relation between the US and, uh, and, and Turkey. Uh, of course, if Joe Biden is elected, I think uh, this uh, situation would be changed. And already you have seen that uh, Turkey worried a lot uh, regarding this American election, uh, especially between, uh, because Mrs. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, the head of the House of Representatives in the American Congress, uh, has uh, recently uh, uh, made some, uh, uh, declaration regarding Turkey and saying uh, especially that the time has come to be arch uh, uh, with Turkey uh, and this provoke uh, important reaction or important response uh, of the uh, Turkish envoy in Washington DC. Uh. So we can think that um, at the moment uh, Turkey uh, and especially the, the ruling party and the government are um, worried, worry a lot uh, about what's going to happen uh, after the, the American election if, uh, if uh, Donald Trump uh, is not elected, is Joe Biden is elected. Okay, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't have that much to say more than this. I mean, uh, and uh, simply the the, uh, the tension between the U.S. and Turkey is also uh, feeded by uh, the recent uh, uh, um, uh, uh, 
the recent question of uh, the Turkey's decision to test uh, the S-400 uh, 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 Russian missile defense system. Uh, and, and this is, uh, this is something uh, 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 that has been, uh, uh, um, that has created some, uh, some uh, um, uh, problems uh, uh, among some American senators uh, uh, and triggered a, a bipartisan effort to uh, impose sanctions on Turkey under the countering America's advers adversaries through sanction act. And so this is, uh, uh, also, uh, uh, an element in the, in the uh, in the balance, uh, but I think it's uh, it depends also on on, on many other uh, uh, topics at stake. So, uh, but I think we can move to a, a, a two other people who are uh, together. I'm, I'm going to read the questions. They are raising the issue of uh, the link between uh, Turkey and uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, Tripoli, uh, Libya. Uh, first question from Jose, uh, how can we imagine a more robust and credible intervention of the EU in the Libyan conflict when we have France supporting Khalifa Haftar on the one hand and Italy supporting on the other hand the government of Tripoli? Um, so, I mean, uh, that's a very good question that is also linked to uh, the question of Hakan Ilmaz, uh, 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 who is sending uh, 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 his regards and, and, and uh, the question, uh, which interest does have Russia by supporting Marshal Haftar? So, uh, uh, and, and the second aspect, do you think uh, a changing government in Turkey can change the proactive strategy? Uh, so maybe Jean, uh, I will leave you the second part of this question. <laughs> and uh, 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 I can provide few elements, and maybe I give you the the, the, the floor after. Um, yes, about I, I just want to to say uh, hello to uh, um, my colleague uh, Jose Pavia, uh, who is a visiting professor, a colleague of uh, our partner uh, uh, of Luciada University in Lisbon. Uh, so. Uh, Hello, uh, Mr. Pavia. We'll be happy to welcome you uh, on the second uh, on the second semester. Uh, but um, yes, uh, you have the floor on this uh, first point, uh, Daniel. Uh, so I think the the uh, the alliance with the Khalifa Haftar is uh, linked to uh, uh, to to uh, uh, let's say. Uh, uh, larger uh, um, um, strategic vision of uh, what stability means. I mean, at some point uh, uh, in Tripoli, there is something like, uh, uh, okay, uh, maybe a legitimate government according to the UN, but uh, surrounded uh, uh, by uh, uh, militias and Islamist militias. And so uh, Russia is definitely against any type of Islamist militia. Uh, uh, and, and had a very, very uh, bad memory of uh, what did happen actually in, uh, in the Caucasian uh, area uh, regarding this, uh, this problematic. Uh, on the one hand, on the other hand, the stabilization of, uh, of uh, uh, Libya uh, might, be, uh, might have a high cost for uh, democracy. That sounds a little bit obvious, but uh, I'm reminding this also because uh, uh, Marshal Haftar is leading uh, the national army and, uh, and, and therefore, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a rather interesting asset. On the other hand, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the push provided by Turkey to uh, 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 Prime Minister Sarraj uh, in Tripoli uh, um, stopped the, the, uh, the 2019 attempt of uh, uh, Marshal Haftar to, uh, to, uh, uh, um, to invade uh, uh, Tripoli. And to to take over in, in in Tripoli, so I think this this uh, this game is also uh, uh, I, I mean a larger uh, uh, larger issues related probably to oil also I mean probably uh, uh, we have to remind that Libya is a, a, a large oil resource country uh, uh, I mean uh, not not in the maritime sea but uh, on, on Earth uh, and second that. Uh, uh, the, the support of uh, 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 
so I mean the the, the interest of, of of France supporting Haftar is is in in line with this far from uh, 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 from uh, uh, the idea of uh, supporting a democratic movement and, and far much more uh, concerned with uh, uh, stabilization of, of um, Libya and Italy supporting uh, 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 Tripoli uh, is also a, a, um, a proper way of Italy to deal and to claim to have the upper hand over uh, over the Libyan uh, uh, file, uh, I would say, uh, due to uh, its uh, past uh, historical uh, relationship uh, uh, and colonization uh, of, of Libya. And, uh, um, and, and so uh, uh, an attempt also to, uh, uh, to, have, uh, to have a say uh, uh, in counterbalancing France, probably, and, and, uh, uh, and other European uh, powers that might be uh, 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 yeah, more in line with the with the, the idea of uh, the strategic idea of uh, having a, a, a strong power leaded by a military man uh, in uh, finally uh, Haftar uh, in Tripoli, instead of having uh, a blurred and unsafe environment uh, 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 stemming from uh, various uh, uh, militias. Uh, and and uh, and from this point of view, I mean, the, the, these contradictory uh, um, supports of uh, Haftar on one hand, Al Sarraj on the other hand, are linked to more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, European rivalries. Uh, at my view, uh, in, in this fight. Um, so maybe uh, Jean, you would like to add some uh, aspect and, and and maybe also deal with the uh, uh, the second part of the question that was also linked to. Uh, uh, do you think a changing government in Turkey can change this proactive strategy more generally? Yeah, uh, the, to, to add uh, some element uh, to the, the question of uh, Professor Pavia, uh, I can say that, um, well, this uh, split inside the EU uh, and especially uh, in the Libyan uh, conflict uh, was also a problem in the Eastern Mediterranean, because despite the support to Greece and Cyprus, uh, of course, they are members of the European Union, we uh, saw that uh, the different countries of, uh, of uh, the EU uh, didn't agree each other. And the position of France, uh, this uh, prominent uh, military position uh, of France uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean uh, was not really support during the, 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 the European <coughs> Council. Uh, already in, uh, in July, in fact, the, 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 the European Council, despite the support to Greece and, and Cyprus, refused to decide sanction uh, against uh, Turkey. And even after the last development, uh, arch development in August and in, in, in September, uh, finally, uh, we observed that the last uh, European Council didn't take any, any sanction. When even in the more concerned country of the EU, for example, when you look at um, uh, the last, um, uh, when you look at the, the last uh, Mediterranean uh, submit and the, uh, the so-called MET-7 uh, uh, that took place in, in, in Corsica uh, months ago, uh, we saw that, uh, of course, uh, Emmanuel Macron tried to uh, gather the different uh, Mediterranean countries, but uh, we have, uh, in fact, two trends. Huh? The first, uh, the first side was uh, made up of uh, uh, Greece, Cyprus, and France, and the other one were not. Uh, of course, they declared that support uh, of uh, to uh, Greece and Cyprus, but they were uh, reluctant to uh, take uh, true sanction against Turkey. So, and Turkey took. Uh, took the benefit of this situation because Turkey uh, called the European Union to be a moderator 
uh, and this was, to, I, I think, to, to, to balance the position of, uh, of France. So, of course, um, I uh, should say that uh, uh, we have seen, in the, especially in the East Med crisis, France trying to take the leadership uh, in the European uh, foreign policy, uh, but that the situation concretely is uh, difficult and uh, uh, the, 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 the position of France was not easy regarding the, the reaction of the, the members of the different members of the, the European Union. Perhaps there are also other explica explanations. Some observers say, well, in the, this situation, uh, France is playing uh, uh, the bad cop uh, and uh, is doing the, black, the bad cop and uh, Germany is a sort of a good cop uh, in, the, in the history. But Germany concretely is also uh, interested in uh, uh, the sustainability of the migration agreement. And for Germany, this is the main point. So in fact, you can observe that uh, uh, European countries have different interests and sometimes they, these different uh, interests impede them to agree each other to, to take common decisions. Yeah, thank you, Jean. I mean, this is uh, absolutely uh, interesting uh, as, as an element. Uh, uh, we have several questions uh, around uh, from Seljan Karabektash. Uh, uh, all around uh, 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 with various formulations, so I have to choose one of them. Um, uh, on, on the question of uh, Azerbaijan-Armenian conflict, um, uh, do you think that there is a link between Azerbaijan policy of Turkey and East Mediterranean policy? Does Turkey have the same foreign policy goals as at the two in the two regions? Uh, uh, how do you assess uh, its approach, and uh, uh, and also the fact that um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yes, uh, is there actually yeah uh, another formulation of this? Is there a link between the Azerbaijan policy of Turkey and East Mediterranean policy? I mean, this is the this is the main the main idea, and 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 therefore. Uh, 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 the, the, the interest of understanding uh, how uh, Turkey, uh, uh, why maybe, and how uh, is it behaving in this crisis uh, between Armenia and Azerbaijan? Well, um, I don't know if you want to respond, uh, Daniel, or if, if I had mm -hmm. some elements. Well, uh, I think there is a link uh, between both fields. And the link is uh, passing through domestic politics. Uh, it is interesting that the Azerbaijan uh, conflict, well, the Caucasus uh, conflict, rose uh, when the tension in the Eastern Mediterranean were, was uh, decreasing. Yeah? And I think that, uh, of course, the populist government had to fuel with nationalist issues the uh, domestic politics, and um, perhaps, uh, and well, we we had done to to that uh, that uh, uh, evolution to that phenomenon that, uh, in fact, the, this new conflict was taking. Uh, the, uh, the the place of the uh, taking the room of the the former conflict, uh, uh, so this could be an explanation. But uh, well, conflict uh, like that uh, uh, do not depend only on uh, domestic policies, of course. Uh, well, I, I think we have, when looking at the, the, the Caucasus conflict, uh, it is uh, a complex uh, conflict. Uh, recently, I participated to radios and 
TV's program, and they were uh, approaching this uh, Caucasus conflict uh, through the neo ottomanist uh, approach. And well, we have to keep in mind that, in fact, Azerbaijan is not really uh, 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 an Ottomanist territory, an Ottoman territory. It is um, Azerbaijan has been mainly under influence of uh, Iran and uh, then uh, Russia. And while well, looking at this relation between uh, uh, between Turkey and Azerbaijan, uh, we are uh, more in uh, pan-Turkist uh, uh, pan-Turkist uh, issue than in a, in a neo-Ottoman issue uh, because uh, Azerbaijan, as you may know, Azerbaijan is mainly a Shia country uh, uh, like Iran. Uh, and this link uh, between Azerbaijan and uh, in Turkey uh, were began uh, at the end of the First World War when the two uh, parts were becoming a nation state. Uh, uh, so uh, we have to carefully assess the history uh, of this region and the different actors. Uh, it's true uh, as uh, Daniel mentioned uh, it very well, that it is a country of what uh, Russia consider at uh, its uh, uh, its uh, near abroad, uh, and um, a lot of observers said that uh, in this region uh, Turkey was uh, challenging Russia. My, I'm not sure of it. I'm not sure that Turkey is really challenging. And I was also impressed by uh, the self-restraint of Russia regarding Turkey. Uh, even Russia said, well, Turkey can uh, interfere in the conflict until uh, Turkey is not really uh, attacking. Uh, Turkey is not really crossing the border of Armenia. So perhaps here that could be a game between Turkey and uh, and uh, and Russia regarding the control of the region, because of course uh, Russia. Uh, uh, worry about the future of the region and worry seeing this conflict between two neighbors. Uh, Russia provide arms to both uh, neighbors. But recently, uh, Armenia uh, tried to um, uh, obtain recent uh, domestic development in Armenia, permit to see that uh, uh, Armenia and the new uh, ruling government of Armenia tried to get a room of maneuver, uh, not to oppose Russia, of course, but to get a room of maneuver uh, uh, regarding the, the, the Russian influence. So perhaps also the problem of Russia is to reinforce its control uh, on this region. And this could lead, lead Russia to agreement with Turkey uh, to control the, 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 the region. But the situation is really complicated, really complex, uh, because when you look at the situation, the main ally, uh, of course, uh, of Azerbaijan is not only Turkey, but Israel that provide uh, weapons and especially drones. Uh, so, uh, and the interest of Israel is to have uh, an access to the, uh, the Azerbaijanese airport uh, against Iran, uh, the main ally out of Russia, the main ally of, uh, of Armenia is Iran. And Iran is uh, 
you speak of these uh, mercenaries uh, sent by Turkey in uh, in uh, in Azerbaijan uh, and in the conflict, but Iran uh, was really not happy to see this kind of guys in the Caucasus. Uh, and when looking at the parliament debate in Iran and the Iranian press, we see uh, people saying, well, we expel this kind of people of Syria. It's not to have them on our border in, uh, in the Caucasus. Um, so we have to take uh, that into account. Uh, and uh, and uh, I, I think the Caucasian uh, situation is really complicated. Uh, interesting to see also uh, that uh, interesting to see also that uh, in fact uh, both countries, uh, Israel and Turkey, objectively, perhaps not ideologically, uh, are on the same position in the Caucasus and also could be on the same position in, in the Eastern Mediterranean, because at the moment is not the case, but uh, I think um, uh, Israel has not lost, uh, lost the, uh, lose the hope uh, to uh, regain, to restore its relation uh, with Turkey in the Middle East, in the Near East, because especially on the Syrian conflict, they are not far positioned. So we'll see what happened. But Daniel, I was uh, asked to conclude our okay. uh, webinar uh, because uh, I, uh, I uh, have my two friends here, my uh, dear friend Imad Kilo and uh, our uh, very a uh, nice friend of the communication uh, service, uh, Mrs. Marilyn Allenay. I, I thank Mrs. Uh, Marilyn Allenay for his huge help. Uh, and they are telling me and uh, sending me messages to conclude. So I am not going really to uh, provide you a conclusion uh, because it would be too long and we have plenty of uh, issues uh, to address now, I hope that you will uh, read our uh, diplomacy. Uh, I, my advice is also to read uh, articles uh, I, we wrote in uh, uh, different uh, medias. Uh, I am pleased to conclude the, this um, uh, first webinar by uh, telling you my pleasure not only to make this presentation with MAP, but also to discuss with you. Uh, I think uh, our first webinar is a, a real success and this uh, due to the attendance we have. And I hope to uh, see you uh, next time in this uh, new session of webinar of Sciences Po Grenoble in English. Thanks for your uh, attention. Thanks, Daniel, for your involvement uh, in this uh, important event and see you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks to all. See you then. Bye-bye.